I'm John Taberner. I'm a consultant at Freehills. I've, uh, I was a partner for 20 years here. Now I'm a consultant um, and I've been practicing in environmental law for as long as I care to remember. <laughs> Well, there's a good deal of similarity between what was proposed, first of all, in, um, uh, at the beginning of uh, 2010, um, and what's now in place, um, but it's substantial differences too. But essentially now there's um, two broad categories of people who are going to be liable under this legislation. There's uh, um, pe people who operate facilities that emit above a threshold of emissions every year and then suppliers, upstream suppliers of natural gas. There's a third category uh, for certain types of um, users of fuel to opt in to the system. So um, the categories of liability have shrunk from what was originally proposed but the basic architecture of the legislation is much the same now as was proposed uh, when the carbon pollution reduction scheme was talked about. It's a curious central feature of the Act is this, that um, uh, it's not strictly speaking a requirement that uh, liable entities uh, acquire and surrender carbon units as they're called or carbon permits. Uh, it's not strictly a requirement but uh, the way the legislation works is to say that um, it, it is to provide for how um, uh, uh, emissions levels are to be calculated or amounts of emissions to be calculated and uh, then to say that if you have a unit shortfall, i.e. if you don't acquire and surrender um, a relevant number of units in any financial year, then you'll then, th then a unit shortfall charge will be imposed. So although strictly speaking the legislation doesn't say you will go out and acquire and surrender um, carbon units, uh, the, the effect is that uh, it really means that if you have a unit shortfall because you haven't acquired and surrendered carbon units, then you'll have a charge. So it's up to you as to whether you have a unit shortfall or not, but if you do, then you get a charge. So that's the central way that the legislation operates. Well, first of all, I should try and understand them and the, the, um, the legislation, I mean, a, a large task for lawyers is going to be just to get their heads around this legislation because there's uh, oh, 18 or 19 pieces of uh, central legislation to try and understand. Um, I, I like to think of it as a, um, um, a, not a complex architecture, but an architecture on a large scale in the legislation. So it's like going into a large, say, I don't know, showground where there are all kinds of different um, uh, warehouses and, and pavilions. Um, and uh, you know, each one, it takes time to understand the, the whole of the showground. But once you do, the, the architecture is pretty, pretty clear. But it's, it's a broad architecture. So the first thing is to try and get to understand the, the legislation because it is extensive. And then to um, make sure that you, as a company, um, realise and um, uh, are meeting your requ the requirements under it and the, um, avoiding a unit shortfall, in other words. Mm. Well, the natural gas supply industry and people who depend on it uh, downstream will be, um, of course, affected by the legislation because that is the one um, upstream um, s uh, liability that now remains from the CPRS, the Carbon Pollution Reduction Scheme. That scheme, when it was proposed, um, contemplated uh, a range of upstream liability, but now there's just one, it, it's uh, natural gas supply. So if you're a natural gas supplier, or anyone who takes from a natural gas supplier, such as a manufacturer of um, uh, LNG, or people who use gas in the production of, say, plastics and so on, those people will need to understand their liability. Um, and then basically, if you're a person who operates um, uh, or takes um, 
product from a facility that uh, emits above the 25,000 um, uh, tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent uh, emissions threshold, then you'll need to understand your liability there too and account and factor in the cost of um, acquiring, and acquit uh, acquiring and acquitting uh, carbon units. So it is far reaching, so manufacturers and... It, it, it's, it, its direct effects are going to be limited, it seems to me, to uh, not a great number of um, liable entities. There'll be, say, five or six hundred of them. But the consequences of uh, those people being liable will be affected, will be uh, felt um, throughout the economy. So, uh, and that's the deliberate intention uh, of the legislation. The idea is to try and put a relatively economy-wide price on carbon. But, uh, so the consequences will be economy-wide, but the immediate uh, t liable entities will be, you know, not as great a number as uh, perhaps was originally proposed. Yes, most, I would say it's true that, as I said, the, the number of liable entities is relatively small and, and uh, the companies who um, are liable entities have been aware of the fact that they're going to be liable entities for a time. And I, in my experience, the comp those companies are, um, by and large, uh, well prepared. Um, the real issue, I think, is, for, is the downstream consequences and uh, for lawyers working out what the uh, existence of this carbon price means when um, dealing, in, dealing in transactions which have uh, asset value components that need to be uh, considered. So the whole question of asset value uh, over a period of time will be um, uh, a critical one. Mm -hmm.